Prison systems have been in existence for centuries, evolving from isolated colonies or dungeons to buildings with bars, and from inhumane chain gangs to the current concept of mentoring and supporting those in our criminal justice system. Studies have revealed that as a nation, correctional systems are missing the mark. While only 5% of the world's population live in the United States, 20% of the world's incarcerated population is in our jails and prisons. Sentence structure is often racially inequitable. Community supervision is required far beyond its efficacy, and people are still releasing homeless. Currently, Washington State has 15,700 people in our prisons, with over 20,000 under community supervision, ranking 37th in the nation for number of incarcerated citizens, with approximately 8% releasing homeless. Something must change. Washington State DOC is ready for those courageous conversations, seeking partners that strengthen our efforts, and utilizing data to guide progressive reform with a new vision, a new mission, a new heart. DOC has made a commitment to change the culture of corrections, the way we think about incarceration, our values as compassionate human beings, and the way we live this better version of ourselves. In 2020, DOC revised its mission statement to drive change in all aspects of our operations, to improve public safety by positively changing lives. In fact, annual training and new employee recruitment has been redesigned emphasizing this mindset, because only by living that mission can we realize our vision. These overarching tenets require each DOC employee to embrace the agency's commitment to operate a safe and humane correction system and partner with others to transform lives for a better Washington. The Department of Corrections has partnered with the International Organization AMEND and the Vera Institute of Justice to continue striving towards a more compassionate operation, ensuring every person is treated with respect and dignity. Those incarcerated or on community supervision are often from extremely poor communities, disproportionately from communities of color, and often lack education and employment opportunities. They represent the racial and ethnic disparity in criminal justice systems. According to the Sentencing Project, a group that studies racial disparities in criminal justice, black Americans are more than five times more likely than white Americans to be imprisoned, and Hispanics 1.4 times more frequently than non-Hispanics. Black individuals make up 4.21% of Washington State's population, but nearly 18% of those in our prisons. People of color are more likely to receive longer sentences within the sentence range than non-Hispanic white Americans. Those releasing from prison are our neighbors. 95% of those incarcerated will return to their communities. It is vital that each person entering our correctional system is assessed at intake to identify physical, social, and emotional needs and establishing a dynamic, personalized, goal-oriented plan for successful reentry. Helping people to become better neighbors results in fewer victims of crime and decreases harm to other people and communities. Evidence-based strategies supporting reentry are the focus of DOC. The Family and Offender Sentencing Alternative and Community Parenting Alternative have been thriving in DOC for 10 years. Washington State is the only state in the union offering both the Sentencing Alternative and early release on electronic home monitoring and boasts an 88% success rate of those not returning to prison. Pramila Jayapal, our U.S. representative, is co-sponsoring federal legislation, the Families Act, to provide alternatives to incarceration for parents and caregivers. She states, Proudly modeled after a successful program in Washington that has been proven to reduce recidivism, the Families Act establishes a new federal program that diverts parents and caregivers from incarceration while keeping families together and investing in their well-being by offering resources, services, and trainings to meet their individual needs. The Second Chance Act piloted at Monroe Correctional Complex and Washington Correction Center for Women targeted releases into King County. This successful program supported integration with community partners at the pre- and post-release phases and emphasized data sharing across the agency and among community partners. Participants had a 44% reduction in first-year felony convictions. As Congresswoman Jayapal advises, prison reform happens through legislative action. That's why DOC is proposing legislation that will not only reduce the prison population, but support justice-involved persons in becoming better neighbors, re-engaging them as members of their families and communities, and building their confidence to succeed. 
DOC's charge is specifically to provide custody over those convicted and sentenced to prison by the courts, based on laws and criminogenic evidence, not to determine who are incarcerated or their sentence structure. DOC proposes the following statute changes. Allow those sentenced to prison a uniform 33% earn time toward their sentence, including any enhancement time that was added to their sentence, such as a weapons enhancement. Earn time is one of the few tools available to the department to address disparities in prison, as well as incentivize good behavior and encourage participation in programming. Through these initiatives and others, the agency hopes to correct some of the systemic disproportionality in the criminal justice system, which has led to over-incarceration of people of color. Expanding the department's authority to allow partial confinement using electronic home monitoring with DOC oversight and expanding programs such as graduated reentry. Transition to a partial confinement assists people in a more gradual approach to release and allows the department to assist in this transition in the community. Supporting these pieces of legislation would reduce the average daily population in prisons by over 4,800 people over the next two years and create a savings of $60 million to the state's general fund. More importantly, it would drastically reduce the racial disparity in prisons. In 10 years, projections show that black individuals will constitute 31% of the reduction in ADP, Alaskan American natives 4%. In 2033, approximately 11% of the prison population would be black Americans and 5% Alaskan American natives, as compared to today's 18% and 6% respectively. The department is proposing limiting tolling for community custody to only those times when a secretary or bench warrant is issued or the original sentence is being served. The current system for tolling is complex and has a high potential for error and has no evidence of creating better outcomes for those supervised. The funds used to manage the tolling tracking would be better utilized, supporting a successful transition to the community. This proposal would decrease the ADP by 501 and save $5 million over the next biennium. Limited tolling is recommended by the Sentencing Guidelines Commission and the Criminal Sentencing Task Force. Community supervision reform also affords the opportunity for a more successful transition back to community and could decrease prison population as 39% of those in prison violated their court-ordered supervision and are reincarcerated. We want to invest in a new approach to community supervision. The governor's 2021-2023 proposed budget addresses reinvesting in such strategies too. Provide increased support to individuals on community supervision through expanded funding to community providers, increased staffing for case management, and continuity of care, and development of a robust coaching model of supervision, increasing the likelihood of successful reentry. The department's proposed iCoach program embodies this proactive mentoring approach. Governor Inslee is correct. Investing in a coaching model of supervision will reduce recidivism and promises greater success for those returning to our communities. Investing in safe, comprehensive health care is also essential, especially for those incarcerated. Health care is expensive, but it is the obligation of our state to ensure quality health care is accessible for those under our jurisdiction. Managing chronic conditions, cancer treatment, mental illness, and preventative care, including dental care. A major barrier to improving the healthcare system in DOC is the lack of an electronic health record. DOC currently operates an archaic paper-based system which presents significant risks to access and care delivery in a correctional environment. DOC is requesting funding to move forward with an EHR that will improve timely access to care and patient safety, Coordinate care across disciplines and facilities. Provide a pharmaceutical management module and allow the transfer of patient data to community providers to ensure continuity of care upon release. Primary care services are provided at all 12 facilities. Outpatient clinics see hundreds of patients per day. Most are equipped with digital radiography, optometry, and dental suites with digital panoramic x-ray. Our six infirmaries provide 24 seven care and are equipped with community standard hospital beds and biomedical equipment. Comprehensive mental health treatment is provided for those struggling with mental illness. Currently, nearly one third of our ADP have a mental health condition with 26% in active treatment. Addressing behavioral health needs will reduce the caseload for therapists and psychiatrists and increase favorable outcomes for these incarcerated patients. 
It is imperative that the agency acts responsibly, bringing about meaningful change and sustainable operations. Through the partnership with the Evergreen State College and others, the Sustainability in Prisons Project aims to reduce recidivism while improving human well-being and ecosystem health. All 12 prisons boast sustainability and environmental education programs. Hundreds of dedicated staff work tirelessly, offering those in our care every available opportunity to make positive changes in their lives. While DOC has enjoyed some success, change cannot happen without understanding and trust. DOC understands the importance of informing practices through a diversity lens reflecting the needs and differences in gender and non-conforming persons, taking into account that the majority of women in prison have experienced violence in their lives. Equitable treatment of transgender, intersex, and or gender non-conforming individuals is critical when determining housing, classification, programming, and supervision. And trauma-informed staff training helps create an environment conducive to rehabilitation and safety. Correctional Industries operates job training programs for incarcerated individuals, building a solid foundation for successful integration back into communities. The goals of CI's workforce development are to ensure every qualified incarcerated person is work ready and employable upon release and achieve post-release employment and develop community partnerships on employment readiness, training, and education. Research shows that incarcerated individuals are 48% less likely to recidivate if they've had access to college courses prior to release. Therefore, DOC is seeking funding to provide educational psychologists to screen students for learning disabilities, secure internet access for online post-secondary education opportunities, and purchase computers and other technology mirroring the community learning experience. Secretary Sinclair co-authored an article regarding secondary education in prison and the value of Pell Grants to help make a college degree possible, even during incarceration. Education is the primary means of upward mobility in our society. Research shows that removing the federal ban on Pell Grants for people in prison would increase employment rates among formerly incarcerated students by 10% on the average. These benefits help reduce poverty and shatter cycles of involvement with the criminal justice system. It takes courage for justice-involved individuals to step back into their communities. It takes courage for communities to welcome them home and provide the necessary services they need to become better neighbors. It takes courage and commitment for DOC to step forward, reach out, and lift up those in our custody. But it is our duty to strengthen their pathway home.